Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. Um, welcome to the first session of the Academy of Oral Surgery uh, Spring Symposium. Um, in partnership with the Global Summit Institute as a kickoff of our annual Podinar season, uh, we have our uh, wonderful uh, chair and uh, and uh, partner from Endodontics uh, that's going to join us. A lot of you guys are probably wondering why an endodontist. We'll get into that in a second. Good morning, Professor uh, Basin. How are you? A very, a very good morning, Kenard. How are you? Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And you, uh, you have one of my favorite topics. Uh, a lot of people probably think why an endodontist at an oral surgery symposium is because oral surgery is a multidisciplinary approach, uh, because oral surgery is uh, for all dental professionals, it's prudent for us to know when to save versus uh, uh, categorizing everyone into one uh, scenario of extractions and post-extraction uh, prosthodontics and uh, uh, things of that sort, if you could have saved the tooth from the beginning or multiple teeth. So we're very excited about you uh, uh, in a scientific way uh, explaining to us when it's time to uh, to take it out uh, you know oral surgeons say uh, when uh, when in doubt take it out but but you have <laughs> but you have a different scenario for us that you yeah, yeah absolutely to. absolutely I believe that uh, if we try to save the tooth I think that's the first way that we should look at Yes, uh, I uh, uh, wholeheartedly agree with you to get started before I uh, uh, familiarize the um, uh, audience with your wonderful credentials. Just a couple of housekeeping stuff. Um, I'm going to share my screen to make things uh, a little easier for everyone. <clears throat> so first and foremost, we are going to have uh, uh, the rest of the sessions today starting after this uh, 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 opening. Uh, with Dr. Uh, Javid as the host, and these are the topics of today, and you can earn one CE unit per uh, session. At the, at the end of each session, there's a comments area on the side or on the lower part on your screen. You scroll through those comments, you'll see a link that will explain to you how to get you secured and, uh, and your certificate printed for these sessions. Also, we have two specials going on that you would like to inform you about. The uh, International Extraction Academy workshops are going back up. They're starting this this July, this summer, um, as uh, vaccinations are readily taken over, uh, at least the Northern uh, American market. So we encourage you to come back out. Uh, if you're listening to this show today, you can get 50% off those uh uh, that's this offering for the hands-on workshop where we cover a lot of uh, basic to a little bit more complex uh, office procedures. We've been doing these since 2013. They're very well received um, as a secondary uh, measure to the online lectures. So listening today, you uh, are welcome to become a member of the Academy of Oral Surgery on us for a year. Um, all you do is you use that uh, code at the time of checkout, and it will uh, give you a year free membership, whatever the fees are, we'll waive them all. We highly encourage you to take benefit from that because you're also starting the fellowship program soon, which will lead to a mastership and diplomate of, of that sort. Um, with that said, a quick uh, a review of how and where to register. Um, if you're interested, if you have products, services, um, uh, ideas, techniques uh, that you would like to share with our colleagues and you're a doctor and you believe that it will benefit other doctors, we are fully behind you. This entire operation is predicated upon doctor-to-doctor -doctor collaboration. Uh, we highly encourage you to get online, go to top100doc.com and schedule your podinar. You can learn a little bit more about our magazine, a little bit about more about our nomination process, uh, and uh, and get registered for Podinars. We got a robust uh, month coming up of them, uh, and you can directly schedule. There are some 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 hosts already in there that you can go in. They're uh, composed of our regions and and dream team members that uh, that will host you there now. 
uh, from all the different different disciplines, chiropractic, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, optometry, and uh, our medical philosopher friends uh, uh, that carry also PhDs uh, uh, in addition to their doctorate degree that will uh, help us with that realm. Uh, but it's growing exponentially and the nomination process this is another favor we ask of all of our colleagues as a dental has exploded this year uh we have four times the nominations that we have had uh, uh six months early uh which is unbelievable so we close the nomination for dental for this year you can still nominate but it will be considered in 2023 but we would really appreciate if you nominate yourself or other colleagues in the realm of medical, pharmacy, optometry, chiropractic, and philosophy as it's our first year. We're getting a lot of nominations in, the more the barrier. Uh, so we would really appreciate if you guys help us as we build this uh, massive operation predicated up on the blockchain concept for doctors, of doctors, by doctors, uh, in, uh, in, in regaining our autonomy back over the professions. Um, with that said, uh, let's go and get into Dr. Basin's background. Uh, he's currently, he is the postgraduate from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Clinics of Rajiv Gandhi University. He's uh, successfully practicing as a single sitting and adonis and aesthetic dentistry expert in New, De New Delhi. Interestingly, he's also the uh, associate as a professor and head of the Department of Endodontics in Delhi and is uh, often a guest faculty member from US, Canada, Germany, Dubai, Brazil, Russia, and many others. You probably frequently have seen him in endodontic uh, or microscopic related uh, discussions or presentations online, but he's recognized as a well-known speaker at various national and international conferences. He has received many rewards, uh, awards for his winning articles and, uh, and his contributions in the fields uh, of, of endodontics and uh, he also holds an international certification on engine driven endodontics by essential dental seminars in, in New Jersey um, and he's also a faculty of the Academy at Dubai for professional diplomas in endodontics so it would take me literally all day uh, to read his uh, words and credentials um, let's get uh, right into it you also I understand you also work with Carl Zeiss in Germany and uh, what is your driving motivation, Dr. Basin? Well, uh, thank you so much, one and all. And thank you, my friend Kenor, for introducing me. And uh, it's indeed a pleasure and honor once again to be back. And yesterday we had some issues uh, with the internet. So I hope we are able to do it today. But yes, one thing I would like to share with you all is that learning and sharing is a continuous process. And I believe that that's what we had been doing. And as a part of the Global Summit as the chairman of the International Cooperation Committee. We have tried our level best to come to uh, the level of excellence with all the best mentors and clinicians and academicians around the world at one platform that is the Global Summit. And as, a, as the world is changing and so are we, and we are now expanding to the field of chiropractic, pharmacology and uh, ophthalmology and many more. So it's we are from doctor to doctor and it is actually a great association that uh, I would like to welcome you all and be a part of it. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, um, we have had uh, some more inquiries. Um, you have done a great job as the uh, uh, chairman of uh, cooperative efforts that we have with uh, outside organizations. So if you guys want to get more involved with the D2D movement that's uh, sweeping the globe, uh, Dr. Basin uh, will uh, end up being in some sort of a communication with you uh, as an organizational, uh, an organizational front. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, here, uh, Madan Mohan uh, just asked us how to become a member of this association. Um, please uh, review the orientation below or visit oralsearch.org and uh, use the code Global Summits um, at. Uh, at your checkout to have your first year fees waived and become a member which will lead to um uh will lead to your um uh, fellowship and diplomate status in time Any, anyways doc uh so exciting stuff at, if you're at an oral surgery conference you're going to talk about how to save teeth um and uh let's save some teeth yeah uh, <laughs> All right, so with that said, 
you go ahead and uh, you have the floor, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my friends and colleagues around the world. It's again indeed a pleasure and honor for me to once again to be with you all at uh, the Global Summit. And as we all know that 21st century dentistry is changing. And after this COVID-19, the things have changed quite a lot. But yes, one thing which is always a dilemma that, that, that we all think as a clinicians that when to replace and when to restore a tooth. So being an endodontist here and at the Academy of Oral Surgery, it's a pleasure that I would like to share my views and experiences with you all that what are the different conditions that indicate that we should replace a tooth and what are the conditions in which we should try to restore the tooth to both function and aesthetics. So this beautiful picture says everything all that what we are looking at. Are we looking at a tooth or we are looking at the, the you can say the implants but the main question lies is the decision making. Decision making in replacing and restoring the tooth is a key to the long term success. And that's what we'll be looking at. So before we go into those areas that how to replace a tooth and how to restore it, there are certain considerations that we actually look in a tooth before we go for this restoring. To start with, first one is the extent of the cages destruction of the tooth. That is very important followed by the amount of residual tooth structure which is present. Now, the treatment line, what we are planning for our tooth, does it need a post and core? Again, that has to be evaluated before you start the endodontic procedure. The tooth position in the arch, that how does it going to affect? And last but not the least, the quality of the residual tooth structure. That is very important. That means whenever we are planning to restore a tooth, it is the same way how we want to place an implant. The prosthetically, we should need to analyze the tooth before we go for the endodontic procedure. So for that, remove the, all the KDS tooth structure before you plan an endodontic treatment. So once you have removed the entire KDS tooth structure, you will have an idea that whether all these five parameters fall in place to save it or to uh, replace it. So when to extract and when to save. And I have and in the last past 20 years, I have realized that at the end of the day, it's an inter and the intra practitioner variation. There's a lot of difference which lies like two, pra two practices will say, OK, I need to extract this tooth. And on the other side, one may say I need to save this tooth. So again, there are certain criteria, certain conditions, some cases, some clinicals, uh, which I'll be sharing with you all how you can do it. But yes, the one thing which is very important that sometimes one factor can be the critical determinant dictating that a tooth should be removed. And other times, decisions to remove a tooth are based on the cumulative risk associated with the several factors, as given by Dennis Turner. So we need to follow these criteria. That is, a critical determination is very important. So I always say that when you are planning to restore or to replace, it is just like a game of chess, that you need to play every step so properly that you lead to a success. But yes, when you have to do it, you need to think before you execute. That means you have to have a proper treatment line with you so that you can actually have the areas where you can replace and where you can restore. So go ahead with what are the things to evaluate? First, a restorative evaluation, an endodontic evaluation. Then we need to do a periodontal evaluation of a tooth and definitely the prosthetic evaluation. So what does it mean? It means that restoring a tooth is a multidisciplinary team approach. And I think most of my friends will agree on that, that that is lacking. So again, my sincere request to one and all that whenever you have a tooth with you, please evaluate it in a multidisciplinary approach, because sometimes you may miss something which can actually save a tooth. So again, multidisciplinary team approach is the one of the key areas that we need to focus on. So this is a very good chart, which will tell us at how at different levels you can actually have a multidisciplinary approach and you can actually analyze that whether we need to do an extraction against the conservation. So it is divided in six levels given by the Journal of Prosthodontics. 
So to start with, what is the first level that we need to do? The first one is the initial assessment. That means what does it include? Patient expectations to willing the tooth to save it or to extract. The treatment expectations, whether we are doing it for a short term or a long term. The aesthetic protocols, whether it is involved or not involved. The finances linked to it, whether it is adequate and limited and the patient compliance. Coming to the second level that we need to look into it is a periodontal severity. That means the periodontal disease. How much is the periodontal defect? That is, it is less than five millimeters, five to seven millimeters or more than seven millimeters. We must check the mobility of the tooth, whether it is a grade one, grade two or a grade three. We look for any recurrent periodontal problems which is occurring. So we need to plan a treatment accordingly. Look for the bone loss associated with the same tooth. If we have to restore or replace it, that includes less than 30%, 30 to 65% and more than 65%. Also need to look into the bone defect morphology, whether it is deep or narrow or superficial and wide. Coming to the third level that we need to look into it is a furcation involvement. That what class it is, class one, class two or a class three. Again, what is the interproximal bone levels at the furcation entrance will also help you to decide is extraction or conservation, whether it is at whether it is above, at or below the furcation, presence of any root anomalies which has been there, and the root resection if it is of any financial concerns. Some of the etiological factors that we are looking into it is definitely more important is the oral hygiene is start from the presence of a calculus. Secondly, the surgery, which whether it will going to compromise any bone dimensions. The periodontal retreatments, if it is required or it is recurrent or it is refractory. The root proximity with the uh, structures. The root canal therapy treatment is successful or the treatment has failed. That means whether it has to go for an endodontic retreatment, that has to be evaluated. The fifth level includes the restorative factors, which, which is very important again, that whether what we are going to restore it will be uh, in a position that can be restored or it is non-restorable. The extent of caries, as I've told you, we need to evaluate. Very important, crown and a root ratio, whether it is favorable or unfavorable. That can help you to decide. And as I said, post and core, if it is required, we need to evaluate that. Another sum determinants which also plays a very effective role is uh, systemic conditions also and also the habits, especially the smokers and the non-smokers or the patients on the bis bisphosphonate therapy and also the clinician skill. If you see, it is a color coded chart. So but where you can see some green, red and yellow colors. So what does that exactly say? When you see all red, that means extraction is recommended. When you see two red, one yellow or one red and three and a four yellow, you consider for extraction. But yes, when you see all green and one tooth yellow should be considered for the conservation of the two structure. But if you have all red strongly extracted, you go for an extraction. Another very important role, that is the role of CBCT in endodontics is very important. So it helps us to know about the preoperative assessment that includes the tooth morphology, the periapical pathosis which is present, whether the pathosis is of endodontic or non-endodontic origin, any root fractures which has been there, look for the root resorptions and identification of the root canals. We must also see the pre-surgical anatomic assessment should also be done. And also the post-operative assessment, that means healing of the apical lesion. So we need to have some follow-ups. So once you have a follow-up, definitely it takes you to the success in endodontic procedures. And also what kind of perforation which is happening. Another very important part which I would like to focus here is about the periapical index scores. So how do you calculate these scores and how it is helpful in restoring the tooth? So when it is zero, that means it has an intact periapical bone structures. The scores once indicates that the diameter of the relucency is 0.5 to 1 mm. Score two is from 1 to 2 millimeters. Score three is around 2 to 4 millimeters. Score four is around 4 to 8 millimeters. And score five is greater than 8 millimeters. But yes, whenever you see these scores, when you evaluate them, then it also helps you to have an idea about how much you can restore the two structures. But yes, whenever there is an expansion of the periapical cortical bone or there is a destruction of a periapical cortical bone, we must extract the tooth. Otherwise, we try to save it. But sometimes it takes a lot of visits. But yes, I always say when you try to save the tooth, it takes time because patience and persistence is a key in saving the tooth. 
so let's go one by one and see how it looks into the areas of the maxillary molars there you can see that it it's actually showing you how the bone dis, uh, the destruction is there from 0.5 to 1 mm and then you can see the cortical expansion and there is a destruction of bone same thing if you can see for the mandibular molars the kind of lesion these kind of lesions that is from 0.5 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 4 mm and somewhere around uh, about the 5 that you can save it by endodontic procedures but when you go about somewhere at the cortical expansion and uh, at the position like more than that destruction of bone then definitely extraction is a choice and here it is for the maxillary premolars follows the same again so you need to look at the destruction pattern which is happening same thing for the mandibular molars you can appreciate that up to you can say the score 5 that means we try to save the tooth but definitely we need to understand that the coronal structure of the tooth also plays an important role in such kind of cases. You can see for the maxillary canines, it follows the same pattern and also the mandibular canines. So again, different tooth structure, different bone morphologies and the score, the PAI score index will actually help you to understand those areas much better. And that goes for the maxillary incisors. There you can see that. Always try to focus more on to the areas of the peripica and also on the, the labial cortical plate. That is another key area that we need to look into it. Whenever there is an expansion and also there is a destruction or we need to look for any fenestration or dissense which is happening. So especially the maxillary anteriors are one of the key areas for the aesthetic rehabilitation. So definitely when we are planning any kind of treatment in those areas, we need to have a clear picture of uh, of the treatment plan in saving or re replacing them with the implants because replacing them with implants is also a tough in cases of the maxillary anterior region and this is for the mandibular incisors that you can see through this is another uh, cbct of a tooth of a premolar that you can see it looks like a very small periapical lesion right but as you see at the different section there is a big bone loss which you can appreciate here so such kind of teeth, actually, when you see radial lucency, which is going along with the root surface, like a J shape. So in such cases, you need to be very careful when you're deciding about restoring them, because these teeth actually can be a source of fracture line, which can be there. So in such cases, better is extraction and replacing them with the implants. Coming to the CBCT for the fracture diagnosis, again, as I said, this is another case which has reported to my dental practice. The patient had a history of root canal done with the upper lateral in, uh, this thing incisor and uh, sorry, with the canine. And uh, what has happened is the patient has keep, kept on complaining a tenderness to percussion for about one year. So the patient referred to my practice and when we went through the CBCT, so each, the patient was advised an endodontic retreatment, but again, again, Please, when you think about an endodontic retreatment, my sincere request to one and all, please go for the three dimension analysis, go for the CBCTs so that you can actually rule out the tooth in three dimension before you recommend or you start an endodontic retreatment. Because as I went through the CBCT, I can see a very good fracture line which is being present. So that has actually helped me to get a diagnosis that the tooth is non savable So in such cases, definitely implant is my choice. Another case of an internal resorption where you can see that this is the internal resorption. Okay, the CBCT is being done. Again, this tooth can be saved. Such kind of teeth should be saved. And in such cases, the best material to be used is an MTA, that is a mineral trioxide aggregate or a biodentine. So these are the osteoinductive materials which have actually changed the perspective of endodontics. They are actually, uh, you can say, more osteoinductive and biocompatible. So such materials if you use so in such cases the endodontic procedure was started and then there is a placement of the mta this you can see that the presence of an mta to seal that uh, internal resorption so again the cbct is helpful to you to understand what is the extent of the lesion and then the with the help of an mta or biodentine you can actually reinforce it through structure and follow uh, for a more uh, for a more long term success then another important thing is the magnification has actually changed the, the way we are being treating endodontics, especially when we are talking about these areas where we can diagnose a fracture of a tooth very initially with the help of magnification. 
has had me working a lot on these uh, microscopic and non dentistry it has given me an actually an eye to see more deeper in the depth of details before we take up the endodontic cases so such cases as we do lot of cases at our university and also at our center so lot of po uh, my post graduates are working very hard on that and there you can see that there is a fracture line now if these kind of fracture lines which you can see on the highest magnification about 25x under the microscope will actually help you to understand that these kind of teeth should be removed rather than they should be saved and these things actually we miss once we are working on a general practice or when we are not using magnification because a depth of field and a field of view on your eyes on a microscope or in terms of a loop will actually help you to see better so that you can treat better and you can have a long term results for your patients so such teeth needs extraction again bottleneck preparations most of the teeth when we are doing endodontic procedures always now it's a concept of minimally invasive dentine or or minimally invasive preparation that we talk about so again stop making your access preparations too big that you lose lot of uh, coronal and a radicular tooth structure and the cases like this in which you have a uh, uh, like uh, the loss of tooth structure which is been there and there is no ferrule that you can form even if uh, so in such cases the best treatment is that you should go for an extraction and go for an implant this is another case which uh, reported as a pre operative radiograph of a mandibular molar with a peripical lesion and severe resorption of the mesial root the patient was advised actually the extraction but again as i am an endodontist and also an implantologist it always gives me that zeal to save these teeth because implants can wait so what is the protocol generally that we had been following in such kind of cases you this you can see uh, there is a removal of the gutta percha which was done with the gpr this is the system what we use then active irrigation and you can say internal heating because sodium hypochlorite that is 5.25% about 30 seconds to 1 minute is the key areas when we are working in because what we are looking at is that we need to heal those lesions right so there are a lot, lot of evidence based scientific data is there that when you endodontic when you heat the endodontic irrigation and also you activate the endodontic irrigation it helps in a better penetration inside the dentinal tubules and helps in healing as well so what we have done once that is been done then there is a placement of the calcium hydroxide which is there placed inside the root canals for about 3 weeks and then they were again repeated after 3 weeks and this is done at least 3 to 4 times till the time the canals becomes dry so once you see that the canals have become dry but you need to check radiographically the size of the peripical lesion so mark my words one thing is very important when you see that the canals are becoming dry and the tooth structure is sufficient enough please go ahead and do the obturation and in such cases the bioceramic sealers are the best ones so what we have done we have dried these canal and then we have irrigated with chlorhexidine once after 3 to 3 weeks and then we have done the obturation with the use of bioceramic sealers and there you can see a clear evidence of the healing and this is about now it is been 3 years post operatively so again results which are predictable and achievable another pre operative radiograph that you can see here this is a peripical lesion okay and then this is a post operative radiograph after 4 years again looks good but after 4 years there is a loss of the crown now why it has happened this is because of the insufficient ferrule that means of the tooth structure again in such kind of cases if we can do a uh, gingivectomy procedures whether it is a soft tissue gingivectomy if it is recommended i think that is the best one we should go for so again the failure here is not the endodontic failure is basically a prosthetic failure which has happened so there you can see that so a prosthetic failure has to be again as i said earlier you need to evaluate the coronal tooth structure that yes if it needs a ferrule then you need to have a multidisciplinary approach in such kind of cases so that you can actually to give a good fair rule so that it has a good 360 dimensions of the collar to hold the prosthetic restoration but again four year follow ups are there then as i said activation of the endodontic irrigation and internal heating has changed the perspective in endodontics and it is taken the endodontics to the next level so thanks to our friend i had been working with 3d cleaning group as one of the honorary members from india and lot of research work has been done and thanks to our friend alfredo and this actually tells you about the concept of internal heating and endodontic activation so when you have a peripical lesion here so place the endodontic irrigation and then first heat the endodontic irrigation so internal heating is been done 
So it helps in better penetration of the dentinal tubules of the endodontic irrigant. So once it hit it and then go for the activation. As I said, 30 seconds to one minute should be the activation time every time the endodontic irrigant is placed inside the root canal. So good activation, good internal heating will actually help you in healing of these areas much better. Because it there you can see that. Many studies have quoted on this and which I would like to share with you some of them. So this is a research which was done in the and this says that, that the ultrasonic activation of the intracanal heated sodium hypochlorite significantly increases its penetration into the dentinal tubules as just compared to ultrasonic activation. Another study in the 2018 which was published in the Journal of Conservative Dentistry said that the intracanal heating of the sodium hypochlorite at 180 degrees Celsius proved to be more effective in obtaining clean canal walls and on the other hand which is if you are doing an extra canal heating so again that has to be very much in mind another study which was done in 2017 says that uh, when you do an uh, intra canal heating it says that while it is possible to obtain the higher temperatures for a longer time using an intra canal heating technique increases the antibacterial activity and higher ability to resolve the organic tissue and decrease the viscosity so the current study has shown that the intracanal heating technology was able to achieve better results. Another study says that the agitation of the sodium hypochlorite followed by the intracanal warming of the solution seems to be very promising in eliminating bacteria from the infected root canals. So as we know that when we have talked about the peripical index, that is from 0 to 5, where you see the, uh, the extent of the peripical region, the activation of the endodontic kerrigan along with intracanal heating and along with the use of bioceramic sealers will actually give you the desired results what we are looking at. When we talk about the endodontic retreatment, now this case actually another case where you can see that the patient was having a bridge and patient was not actually ready to go for the extraction. But if you see the old endodontic treatment which was done, it was not up to the mark. So what we have done, we have started through the through the bridge. We have uh, started the endodontic treatment, and there was a fiber post. So again, ultrasonics plays a very important role in the in endodontics to remove these fiber posts. So the fiber post was removed, and then you can see the access was gained through the root canals to the periapical area. This is immediate, and then all the protocols have been followed, and then placement of the calcium hydroxide was done. Multiple visits, what we have done in this case same as for the calcium hydroxide and then we have sealed them with the bioceramic sealers and finally this is almost a two-year follow-up so it shows you a complete healing of these areas so again if the protocols are followed well and you have the entire area in your uh, in your you can say in your uh, uh, in your zone then you can actually get those predictable results again when we talk about the aesthetic zone again it's a very important area we need to focus on so what are the considerations when we talk about in the aesthetic zone? So we need to look about the smile line of the patient, the severity of the periodontal condition, the recession induced by the pocket elimination procedures, need for the endodontic elevation with or without post, and last but not the least, the emotional and the aesthetic concern of the patient. So when you talk about the restorative con consideration in such areas, biologic width, that means the biologic width consists of approximately 1 mm of the junctional epithelium and 1 mm of the connective tissue. Again, if you have to plan a crown lengthening procedure, the bone needs to be placed 2 to 3 mm apical to the margin of the fixed processes. But when we really focusing on the more on the aesthetic zone, the crown lengthening procedure, that means when you have a, when in cases where you have a caries under the crown, should be evaluated for extraction. Yes, that is very important. When you see, especially when we get a lot of cases in our practices in which we have a caries below the crown. So again, and most of the time we are taking the radiographs. So the radiographs, again, it's a two-dimensional image. So this is one of the key areas that we are looking at. And we can also increase the crown height usually involves the osseous recontouring of the proximal surface of the adjacent area. So when you do have to do a pro, so the osseous recontouring, again, that means you are actually working more on the bone than onto the tooth. So again, when such kind of areas, I always say that the better is that we can replace it with the implants, uh, especially when the caries is extending subgingivally. 
this is a case of a maxillary right central incisor with a buccal fistula that you can see that there was a buccal fistula and uh, the radiographic view of the silver point which was there so again it was removed endodontic protocols were followed and this the endodontic retreatment was done and the whole canal was filled with mta so that's what is the new protocol that we had been following that using a gut we are not using gutta percha in such kind of cases and we try to do it along with the mta so that actually helps in reinforcing the tooth structure after that the the space is being created for the post placement and this is a final year uh, sorry a final uh, restoration three year follow up so again results which are predictable and achievable this is what i was talking about caries which is extending subgingivally and there is a post and core so such kind of teeth actually should be considered for extractions about the remaining tooth structure when we talk about in the aesthetic zone definitely patient with recession cementum dentine are more susceptible to caries you can plan a surgical crown lengthening of a compromised tooth that has a poor crown root ratio should be avoided always remember that if there is a caries under the processes avoid crown lengthening and implant is a best choice and areas in which the orthodontic extrusion can be done that takes about 8 to 12 weeks and then followed by the 4 to 6 weeks of stabilization this is another case you can see replace or restore in such kind of cases where there is any height very less height of tooth structure or the root level is present extraction is a good choice and implants are the better choice another case this is an endodontic failure you can see there is an endodontic and a prosthetic failure the post and core will not give desired results so again the tooth was immediate extraction was done and then the implant replacement with the bone graft and the collagen membrane was done and this is after the four month of healing and then the implant was loaded so again when you have cases in which you have both the endodontic and the prosthetic failure the attempt to do an endodontic retreatment will never give you a long lasting results and in 21st century we are in those areas where we should give results which are much more predictable there is a very good study which was done in 2003 and 2004 that is known as the toronto study which is found that the endodontic success rate of the vital teeth was about 92% and for the non vital teeth without a periapical area to be 89% and on the non vital teeth with periapical area is about 74% so what is taken together is that the conventional endodontic therapy has a high success rate now the endodontic retreatment the study found that the success rate of the teeth without a periapical area a lesion was about 95% and where there is a periapical lesion it is 65 66% wong et al noted that when there was a large periapical radiolucency present that as i have said earlier that is more than 5 mm on a non vital tooth 65% of the sites healed whereas if the lesion was less than 5 mm 86% does not manifest any periapical radiolucency so here you can see that a case of a mid root uh, again uh, you can see the fracture was there so we have attempted to save this tooth so again this is the placement uh, what we have done the fragment was removed and then the peri what we have done is we have prepared the retrograde cavity with the help of ultrasonics under mic magnification with the buccal end tips and then we have sealed that area with an mta so this is a post obturation this is a one year follow up you can see the healing this is one year six months follow up and this is four years follow up so again the tooth is very much there functional and achievable so once you have the set protocols with you you can actually get desired results this is another case you can see a fracture at the root surface so this is a middle third fracture again with the, we have tried to seal with the mta and uh, we have uh, first what we have done is we have actually gained the access to the periapical area that is to the apical one third and then once that is achieved then i have sealed the entire root canal with the mta as i said earlier mta is one of the beautiful materials that what we have to actually reinforce the tooth structure the patient uh, was not ready for extraction so we did it and finally you can see this is a 3 year uh, follow up after complete sealing of the root canal with mta so mt has given us a very good advancement in terms of material and sciences and we are able to get results which are much more predictable another important thing that we need to rule out when we are talking about endodontics is the sinus tract and the vertical fracture especially when we are looking for an endodontic retreatment in restoring the tooth 
this is a very good uh, uh, like a uh, documentation done by James L. Gutman sir, and this what it shows that that this is a endodontically treated tooth looks everything fine, but there is a peripical lesion. So what is being done? The the probing is being done first on the mesial side. There was no defect. Then on the distal side, there was no defect. And once it was done on the facial side or the labial side, the whole periodontal probe has gone there. So that means they, this says that this tooth is actually having a fracture. So again, such kind of teeth will, if you get these kind of defects, then definitely the choice should always be extraction rather than retreatment. See, we should not go only by the radiographs. We have to do a clinical, we have to apply our clinical knowledge. And also, if it is possible, the patient can go for C CBCTs, it will be the best in such kind of treatment plans. This is another case uh, of an endoperio case which we have treated. This patient has a, actually a single point probing and it has a narrow probing depth. So again, this was an endodontic origin. The problem was happening. So the tooth was opened up and then the placement of the calcium hydroxide was done. But now once that has been done, then the fall and there you can see the middle mesial canal which has been present. And the placement of the calcium hydroxide was again following the protocols of irrigation and uh, activation and intracanal heating. Once that is being done, and then they were obturated with the bioceramic sealer. And there you can see that the one year follow up, this is one year, six month follow up. You can see the healing of this area. And this is now a three year follow up. So the results, which are again predictable. So again, when you have uh, this, is actually a 10 mm buccal probing pocket which was there with this tooth and which were able to heal by a good endoperio treatment plan. Sometimes a wrong angulation, wrong angulation of an implant can also cause a problem to the adjacent teeth. And this is the sometimes it do happens when there is a, when you start initially in the initial years of the implantology. So there you can see a wrong angulation of implant has actually uh, destroyed the periodontal area of the adjacent tooth. So endodontic treatment with the placement of calcium hydroxide was done for two weeks, and then once you have seen that there is a healing which is happening. An endodontic treatment was completed with the help of bioceramics, and then finally, this is a two year follow up. So, again, the case was reported to us. Again, it was treated well. So, save these teeth rather than extract them. Perforation management again, uh, as we all say, that the perforation should be sealed on the same day. That's what we look at, and it should not be left for the future. Reason being, the, when you seal the perforation at the same time, you get the desired results. So this you can see the perforation at the floor again a lot of work has been done at our university as well so you can see this is the perforation which is seen under the magnification okay so the, what is the first step that we will going to do is we have sealed the end the canals these are the teflon tapes that we have used to seal the canals now once the canals are seen and the area has become clean we have sealed the perforation with the help of a biodentine so this is another osteoinductive material which helps you to get results which are uh, much more uh, long lasting and once that is being done, and then there is a final obturation of the root canal system is being done. So again, you can save these kind of teeth for a long period of time. So the follow-up is still under the way. Another case of uh, you can see a perforation which was a large periapical lesion and furcation involvement. So again, the endodontic retreatment was started. We have renegotiated the canals. Gata Parcha, again, after doing all the principles had been followed. We have gutta percha was sealed below the perforation once and then the, you can see the sealing of the gutta percha and then placement of the MTA because this perforation you can only seal either with the mineral MTA or with the bioceramics. So the choice lies in your hand. We have used MTA in that and the system what we have been used is a MAP system, one of the universally accepted system and or the biofilling system that you can use. So the placement of MTA has been done and then we could have done an MTA below as well. But again, you the choice lies with you. The canal, uh, the area that means where the perforation is there, we must seal that area for at least three to five millimeters. That's what I, I believe personally. But yes, if you are at the apical one third, then if you have to seal this area with MTA, then at least five millimeter of plug you should make because the presence of lateral and accessory canals are there. So that can be actually sealed well. Again, we have sealed it with MTA, and there you can see the complete sealing of the canal with the MTA. There you can appreciate that, and this is the gutta percha. And another three year follow up. So, again, results which are predictable and achievable. Another case of a buccal perforation, there you can see that.
the way the jeep gata pacha was going patient was advised extraction but again uh, we have tried our level best to save it so we removed the gata pacha with the help of the edge files we were lucky enough that the gata pacha came out and then sealing that uh, the buckle perforation with the help of an mta there you can see that and then this is a post op after the sealing of with the mta and then this is a complete sealing with the help of bioceramic sealers and this is a five year follow up so the tooth is very much there and we are able to save these kind of teeth for a long period of time another case broken file retrieval along with magnification there you can see that this is a broken file again advice for extraction removal of the gutta parcha done with the tpr working then was established there you can see that and then with the help of ultrasonics this broken instrument was removed lot of activation lot of irrigation sealing with mta the after the removal of broken instrument and there you can see that the exact placement of mta at the site but whenever you are doing that please block the rest of the canal with a cotton pallet or the tape so that the mta doesn't fall in the main canal and then operation the thermoplastic is done because that gives you a three dimensional sealing of the root canal but i always say seal to heal another case lower anteriors presence of a peripical lesion which you can see that through endodontic treatment was done again it failed again it healed but again it failed so multiple times when it failed it was realized that the patient came to us and then what we can see that there are two canals then the patient reported to me we opened it up again and we are able to locate the two canals in the lower anterior so again another uh, very important key home message here is that you need to when you are treating a lower anterior or the uh, especially the lower anteriors please understand the 40% of the lower anteriors do have two canals so sometimes when you see that the periapical lesions are not healing well then try to think about the second canal which is present but yes if you have magnification on your eyes i think you can able to do these cases much more better this is another case of a retreatment what has been done to save the tooth there is a resorption in complete uh, you can say under under not procedure under obturated canals and this is the remnant of the gutta percha which is there on the root canal wall thanks to world of magnification that we are able to work deeper inside those root canal lot of ultrasonic activation and internal heating that you can see that lot of systems i mean using in my practice from endo ultra from eqs so choice lies with the two files and internal heating there you can see that the remnants of gutta percha is and there you can see before and after clean canals minimal perforation and then final sealing with the thermoplastic gutta percha another case uh, was actually uh, came to our practice advice for extraction but again as i say as an endodontist i always believe to save the tooth so if you see here there is a big periapical lesion which was extending we have opened it up follow the protocols placement of the calcium hydroxide inside the root canal again multiple sittings are required so that the healing takes place now once that is been done and then finally you can see here the sealing of the root canals with the bioceramic sealers and you can see a three year follow so the results which are again much more predictable and achievable so such kind of lesions if you do a good treatment planning and also if you follow a good biomechanical principles with good irrigation and good activation and uh, keeping all the perspective of the pai scores in your mind you will able to achieve results which are long lasting another case was actually reported which was actually this is the last case which is is about removal of the tooth again again uh, if you see the tooth structure but yes i tried to save it again you can say that uh, the endodontic procedure was performed and this is the apical gutta percha that means we have play, now we have tried to do the post and core for this case under the isolation placement of the fiber post a core build up 
thanks to world of magnification, we are also able to see the proximal caries, which may be looked like a stain when I was initially saying. So again, good gingival tissue is being maintained. And then finally, the placement, the gingivectomy was also done in this case, a little bit soft tissue gingivectomy was done. And there you can see that the final placement of the all ceramic crown after three weeks, still slight information it was there. And this after four years of follow-up. So again, results which are much more predictable, doable, and achievable. So what are the take-home points? So the factors which favorable the endodontic treatment, number one, advancements in instrumentation and materials, greater predictability, cost efficient compared to the implants. It is more conservative and less invasive. The success it is more compared to that of implants. And it could be one of the important options in systemically compromised patients where implants are contraindicated. And some of the factors which favor the implant placement, the poor outcome of endodontic treatment when compared to implant success rate of over 90%. When there is a concern over the structural durability of the weak and endodontically treated tooth to support a canonal restoration, implant should be a choice. An implant fixture is seems as a better foundation for restorative dentistry than an endodontically treated tooth. And last but not the least, the implant appears to be re a restorative option that requires less follow-up when compared to endodontic treatment. So thank you so much, one and all, for giving me this opportunity to be with you. If you have any questions and anything, uh, you can get connected on my email. And we are all active on the social media. Thank you, Global Summit. And thank you, one and all, to giving me this opportunity to come before you and share my experiences. So I always end my slide by saying this. If keep calm and enjoy endo and save teeth as much as possible. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Basin. What a wonderful presentation. The comments have been overwhelmingly positive about the thoroughness of your uh, information. Um, it doesn't surprise me with all the knowledge that you've been gathering across the world there uh, at your different uh, events. For those of you who attended yesterday and uh, were unable to uh, either register or did register for the CE and couldn't complete the course, go ahead and go back in uh, uh, today in a typo form uh, and you can follow that link. And for those that joined us today as well to uh, obtain their CE for this one hour session, um, Dr. Basin, uh, absolutely great presentation. Very exciting. So Lots much. of good Thank comments so coming in. And uh, uh, we are going to kick off the second uh, part of the event shortly with Dr. Zastro and our uh, host for the day, Dr. Kevan Javid. Uh, please uh, hang around for a few more minutes as we prepare to uh, get started with the next uh, session of, of uh, session two of six today. Um, very well, Dr. Bhushan, I think uh, uh, it's time in India uh, to to start winding down, is it not? It's about 7 yeah, it's over 7.30 now. Yeah, it's 7.30 <laughs> now good. in Delhi. It's wonderful. Well, thank you, so thank you for coming on on a Sunday and, thank you. Uh, and uh, bringing all this information to us. And uh, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you once again. Thank you. Before I leave, I would like to invite all our friends, colleagues who are there uh, uh, in India to join to go and like our global summit page join us at the at us uh, at our summit and come and be a part of us we are waiting for you thank you so much one and all and it's an honor to pleasure from uh, india thanks to all the regions all the chairs and all the community and all the dream team for all the support thank you so much bye bye yes we're waiting for you with open arms you're a doctor you. you're always welcome here thank you thank so you. much bye bye all right, have a great day bye bye you too